uh, I think um, the reason I'm pausing is because I, I have two responses. One is just from a practice point of view, I think there are areas, there are settings that we certainly feel may be more conducive. Um, but I'm not, I'm not aware, I was also reflecting on the literature, and I'm not sure that there's actually any literature that I'm aware of that really addresses that aspect. I mean, one of the, one of the things about, and the other reason I'm hesitating is, one of the things we do in mindfulness meditation is it's present moment non-judgmental awareness. So if we happen to be in a noisy environment, we focus on the noise and, or the sound, and listening to the sound as sound and reflecting on, or being open to the stories that we begin to tell about the sound and how, uh, you know, we say uh, sound is just sound. It only becomes noise or irritating based on the story we tell about it. Uh, and so the, the other reason I was pausing is we actually use the environment often as part of the meditation and, and part of the mindfulness practice itself. But I think, I, I, I do think it's a, uh, still that it's a, a useful area to consider for future research that, that maybe some of the, the, the um, effects of mindfulness might be enhanced or um, uh, not enhanced by, by the environment. I, I, I could add this. I know I have colleagues in Germany who are looking at nature-based meditation. I think many people are doing that. And so the idea of sort of getting out into the world and, and nature specifically and not always in an enclosed environment and what is the effect of that. But I agree with John, I'm not sure that there's a large body of literature on that, which is unfortunate. So it might be something for us to think about. I was wondering about the problem of uh, patient compliance and success of therapy in, in view of patients continuing their practice. I mean, meditation and mindfulness practices are going to be conceptually lifelong practices, aren't they? So, I mean, that's hard for anybody. You know, a lot of time, a lot of effort, 45 minutes a day, I think, in your therapy. And, you know, and, and with you know, vulnerable patients, but even the non-vulnerable ones, I suppose, you know, it's a lot of effort. So, uh, what's the research being put into, you know, overcoming the difficulties in maintaining practice? Um, that's a very good question. Everyone heard that, correct? Okay. Uh, no, no, not everyone could hear. You do have a sweet little voice. Um, but she asked about compliance and has there been work done in finding out if pe how, how are people doing this, if they're doing it. Um, and that is a very good question. Um, from my point of view, what we do in all of our research is we are trying to follow up on that. We do what's called a timeline follow back, which means it's a specific strategy to ask about not just uh, drug use, but practice. And, and we have them sort of prospectively keep this. But again, they could, they could fib, or they usually don't, but they can drop off in their practice. And so we are doing more um, sort of qualitative uh, sort of work and asking them what helps the people who do maintain a practice, what helps do that? If they're dropping off, why? What's going on? But there's not a huge amount that I'm aware of in, in our field um, that is about that specifically. And um, there's a movement also now um, in, in mindfulness in general, there's like one moment mindfulness, one minute mindfulness, where the idea is even if you just get a little bit of it, it's better than nothing. I would, I would echo Kim's comments. Um, I think uh, there haven't been a, uh, many or even any, and I'm aware of really long-term studies that have looked at uh, over years how many people are, are maintaining a regular practice. Um, some of the things that we do in the Mindfulness Center are provide opportunities for people to come together and practice. Um, we have a weekly, uh, weekly sitting group that meets at 5.30 on Thursday nights. Um, so, uh, I think um, that, that uh, trying to provide opportunities for people to continue their practice is important, as well as this is another area of, of study. And I would say anecdotally, in my experience, having um, been a mindfulness teacher and teaching MBSR for over 10 years now, that the, the biggest thing that I 
feedback I hear is that is the last comment that Kim made is that even though I may not be practicing mindfulness on a daily basis or sitting on a daily basis, I still notice effects in my life many years later. So while everyone doesn't practice, many people still at least anecdotally report a significant impact for years. 